this person's super ugly. I have no reason to listen to them. Let's take Ted Bundy, for example. Ted Bundy murdered a, a, a shit ton, shit ton of, uh, of people and females. And, but he was a good looking man. Hello, Mayday family. How are you guys doing today? For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is May and I'm a licensed counselor with a YouTube channel. Well, if people are saying that being pretty is a privilege, doesn't that mean, or wouldn't that in turn mean that being ugly is a disability? Is that what that means? And, and so I, I got to thinking about this and my thought process is yes, if being pretty is a privilege, then that correlates or could definitely correlate with the idea that being ugly is actually a disability. So as I thought about this more, I said, okay, well, let's think about this, right? What is the definition of a disability? So let's see what the definition of a disability is, because I always question what I think I know. So typically when we hear the word disability, we're thinking about uh, individuals that can't walk, that can't, they can't, um, see, for example, that are blind, that are in a wheelchair, we're thinking about really like practical things. The definition of disability is a physical or mental condition that limits a person's movement, senses, or activities. So it doesn't even have to be physical in nature to be a disability. It can be mental. Something that's mentally debilitating would make it so that you are a disabled person. So that definition really, really caught me. It just clarified a lot of things for me. Disability is a disadvantage or a handicap, especially one that's imposed or recognized by the law. So basically, any disadvantage that you have could be considered a disability. Mind blown. When we say pretty, I think most of us are talking about attractive individuals, point blank period, individuals that look good, that people like to see, that they like to look at, that they gravitate towards naturally because they fit what, what society has set as the standards of being good looking. So that's the definition that we're gonna use here in this video. Um, so combining that definition and saying, okay, individuals that are pretty are good looking, they're individuals that society likes to look at that um, cause certain automatic responses, automatic positive responses from other people that ugly people don't get, they don't have. So that would in essence mean that ugly people are disabled. I'm sorry to say it, but yes, if we have this concept of pre pretty privilege, I do believe that pretty privilege exists. And I do believe that ugly people are disabled and it kind of really sucks to be ugly. I, I think I'm just being honest. Um, I would not want to be in a category of being ugly or feel like I'm ugly because I just think that that would be a much harder life to have to live, right? Um, and I'm just being real with that. I, I hate that that's the case, but that's the reality of it is I sure as heck don't want to be considered ugly and I don't want to be ugly <laughs> because that life would be so much harder for me. One of the first handicaps that come with the disability of being ugly is a lack of self-confidence. Typically, people, less attractive people, people that are considered ugly, do not have very good self-confidence. They don't have high self-confidence, right? Especially if we compare that to pretty people, people that are cons considered pretty, good looking, attractive. When we compare the two, typically the majority of the times, people that are not considered attractive, that are considered ugly, do not have high self-confidence. Their self-confidence is pretty low or non-existent. That is the first handicap that ugly people have to deal with and run into 
on basically a daily basis is that lack of self-confidence. For example, as an attractive person, you can go out anywhere on a daily basis and have people tell you how attractive you are. And not just by men, as a female, I can testify to, it's not just men that will do this, it's men and women. Like you'll go out, no no makeup, no nothing, you'll, you'll go out, and you'll just have people at the store tell, tell you, oh my God, you're so pretty. You have people just outside when you're walking around, oh my God, you're so pretty. And you're not even dressed up. You don't even have any makeup on. You don't even have, I mean, you have no heels on. You know, I've had days where I literally had like sweats on and some raggedy shirt and my hair was looking super raggedy in my opinion. <laughs> and I went out and I've had people say, oh my God, you're so pretty. And so if when you have that, that is continuously reinforcing your self-confidence. And so you have no reason to feel like you're ugly or not good looking because people are always telling you that you look good. And so that is a benefit that, that good looking people or attractive people or pretty people have is that they don't have to worry about their self-confidence as far as how they look. This is as far as how they look, right? Um, they don't have to worry about self-confidence in that area because it's something that comes naturally to them because it's always being reinforced by everyone that they, or people that they come in contact with on a daily basis. So I would say that that's a disability, that's a handicap, that's a part of the disability that ugly people have. And it's, I mean, it's pretty sad. I hate that it's that way, but it is what it is. That's how... That's what it is when it comes to society. And if we're being real about it, that's what happens. Another handicap that ugly people have is that people tend to doubt them or question them more than they would an attractive person. I kid you not, there have been so many studies done on, you know, uh, individuals that are scammers, for example, that will come and just take your money, saying that it's for investment purposes. And because they were good looking, they seem reputable, they seem like they are um, good people. And the reason they seem like they're good people is because they're good looking. No one questions that. No, one's, no one will sit there and ask any additional questions, right? And that's one of the benefits that being good looking has. But when you're ugly, you don't have that benefit. It's a handicap because everything that you say, people will question or people will just dismiss automatically because you're not good looking. And it's not, don't get me wrong, it's not that people are doing this intentionally. This is not a conscious thought process that people are going through thinking to themselves, this person's super ugly. I have no reason to listen to them. <laughs> That's not the case. That's not how it goes. It's subconscious. It's an automatic response subconsciously. Ugly people do it to ugly people. You know, they do it to each other and the rest of society does it to ugly people. So it's a pretty substantial handicap to work, work around, to, to have to push through. Because when it comes to good looking people, Good looking people don't have to explain themselves in depth. They just don't. Most of the times they can get away with murder. And I'm saying literally murder. Let's take Ted Bundy, for example. Ted Bundy murdered a, a, a shit ton, shit ton of uh, a people and females. And, but he was a good looking man. This man was very good looking, right? And so even after finding out that he was a murderer, people that knew him or had come across uh, come across him at any point in time could not wrap their heads around it just because of the way that he looked. He just was a good looking person. So that's a, just one of the biggest examples as to how this plays such a huge factor and it actually turns out to be such a big handicap for ugly people when it comes to any goals that they might have or anything that they might be trying to do. So that leads us into the next thing, which is ugly people typically tend to work harder. They just do. Like when you're pretty, you can, you can start to build something just based off of your looks. 
uh, if you're ugly, not so much, right? You have to bring more to the table than, than your looks because you don't have looks to bring to the table. And typically that's more work. So now you have to work harder to gain the confidence of other people. You have to work harder um, to build a platform if you're trying to build a platform. He did, ugly people just tend to have to work a lot harder than good looking people do. Now that just, that's not to say that good looking people don't have to work hard because that's untrue. Uh, even if you're working towards using your appearance to gain a following, for example, like on TikTok is the first one that I think of, that is still a lot of work because you have to like post regularly and things like that. And um, there are disadvantages to being pretty. So it has its own hardships as well. But in comparison to the work that ugly people have to put in, you know, ugly people do have to put in a lot more work to get anything done or get, any, got, get anything accomplished. And that's just because they're starting out handicapped to begin with. They're starting out handicapped because they're not good looking. So, you know, it's like some people start five to 10 steps ahead of the game. If you're starting out five to 10 steps behind, then you have some making up to do, right? So they, you know, ugly people are very handicapped in the sense of they have to work 10 times harder to get anything done or get anything accomplished. The next handicap that I would say that uh, disabled or people that are disabled due to being ugly have is they are a lot of times stopped from getting into certain bars and certain clubs. It is insane. Unless they are with a good looking person, they will not be allowed in. And I've heard these stories. They're almost like horror stories because I've never seen it happen. So when I hear the stories, I'm like, there's no way that's real. But I've heard so many stories where, you know, people are, are, are go out like at night, you know, to the club, or to a bar where, you know, there might be lines, especially in New York. I heard that this happens a lot in New York. And the ugly people are essentially told to wait or step to the side because there's no space in the club or they're not currently doing admitting anyone or whatever. And the good looking people, the more attractive people, it, they come through the line and they are let in, you know, they're just like, okay, you know, good to go, good to go. And then the ugly people are literally just standing there looking. And so I've heard this story over and over again. So I think it's real. I I could see that because they're clubs, they're bars, they want to let in. This particularly happens with females, by the way. I don't know that it really happens with males when it comes to this particular subject. I think it's mostly discrimination against females. Um, and so this really kind of brings out the handicap of not being pretty. If you're ugly, you literally will not be able to get into certain bars and clubs. They just won't let you in. And it, it's the craziest thing to me. So, I mean, what does that teach us? I guess always make sure to have a pretty friend. <laughs> I don't, that was, that was not a, I mean, that was a joke, but it's just crazy because you go in, you're expecting to have a good time and whatnot, and er, you get stopped at the door, and you're waiting, you're watching, you know, all these other girls right, like walk right by you, right? So I think that's a pretty significant handicap uh, that comes from the disability of being ugly. Another very important handicap that comes from being ugly is the fact that people typically aren't very nice to ugly people. Like, they... In comparison to how nice they are, people are to attractive people, people aren't very nice to ugly people. Like, I feel like pretty people are able to get away with being complete dicks. Like, literally, if you're good looking, you're able to get away with almost anything. You know, you could be a jerk to someone, 
And then the next day be like, I'm sorry, you know, and you'll get forgiven just like that. And that's not because of anything. It's just because you look good. So I do think it's a pretty significant handicap because ugly people aren't able to do that. They don't even, most of the times people aren't even nice to them to that extent, to the extent that people might be nice to an attractive person in the first place. So it doesn't even, it doesn't even weigh in. It's just the handicap that they get another handicap that they have to live with and go through life with essentially. So, I mean, it's just one of those things I've seen that. I mean, you know, you could literally as an attractive person, just smile your way through whatever, whatever the hell is happening. <laughs> Literally just smile your way through whatever the heck is happening, whatever the fuck is going on. That you know, you gotta do a smile and keep it pushing. And people are just so nice to you, you know. Literally, people will give you money just for being pretty, you know. It's 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 a real thing. And so if you don't have that, if you're ugly and you don't have that, that's a handicap because now you have to work twice as hard just so people will be nice to you. Um, and just so people will listen to what you have to say. So I think that's a pretty significant handicap. It's pretty sad, but it is what it is. That's just what society has built. If you're attractive and you're in an interview, you know, you're more likely to get the job than someone who's ugly. And I think there's different layers of this because as an African-American, even if you're attractive, you still have some ground to cover if you're competing against white people because we all know that companies will hire a white person before hiring a black person in the first place. But if you're attractive, that goes a very long way. So you don't have as much ground to have to basically crawl through. If you're ugly and you're black, then you just have a double whammy. It really sucks for you because you're going to have to work twice as hard, like not even twice, like 10 times as hard to get any job that you're competing with competing for. And so that's just how that works. And that's in any profession, but especially in the corporate world. Um, in my profession as a therapist, it's actually something that we learn in school. People trust you more. People are more likely to trust you if you're an attractive therapist. It's a part of our curriculum. I learned that in theories class. And so people are more likely to trust you. If you're an attractive therapist, you flash a smile. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, I just think that this topic is, <laughs> this topic is just so funny. Like, not that it's funny because it's not real or it's not serious. It's funny because it's so unbelievable when you really sit down and think about it. It's like, really mind-blowing that this is like an actual thing that's what makes it so funny because it's so unbelievable to like the things that are coming out of my mouth sound like they should be a joke but they're not <laughs> so that's why I'm like the fuck even in my profession if you're an attractive counselor you tend your people your clients tend to trust you more right off the bat. If you're not an attractive counselor, you have to work a little bit harder for that. So again, that's in every profession. That's just the way society is built. And ugly becomes a pretty significant handicap yet again, because you're having to work 10 times harder to gain the trust of other people, even within your profession, even within your job, even when interviewing. You didn't know you had a disability, now you know. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, that wasn't funny. But now you know, like the more you know. Last but not least, and there's so many others that I'm sure that uh, I could have put in this video. Let me know your thoughts and what are some others that you feel like I missed and didn't mention in this video. But last but not least, procreation. To me, this is one of the worst parts because if you're ugly, right? Then that probably means your kids are not going to, I mean, your kids are probably going to be ugly as well. Unless they're lucky, most, your chances of having an ugly child increases dramatically. So if you are ugly, your child is most likely going to be ugly. It's like weight. If you're fat, if you're overweight, your child is most likely going to be overweight because you obviously don't know how to eat. 
the healthier foods and you're going to be feeding whatever your child, you're going to be feeding whatever you're eating to your child. That's how it works. I know it sounds mean and straightforward, but it is what it is. Facts are, are facts. So unless we want our children being overweight and being made fun of for being overweight, we need to learn how to eat for ourselves so that way we can pass that down. That's the same with anything else, right? Any behaviors that we have, any tendencies that we have, we are passing that down right to our children, whether we know it or not, whether we choose to admit it or not. It's the same thing with looks, but unfortunately looks is more uh, genetics. We have less control over it, right? So if you're good looking, one of the blessing, blessings that comes with that is that you're probably going to have a pretty good looking child. And there's a good chance that that child is going to come out probably even better looking than you. It just because you probably made it with someone that is at least regular looking or good looking as well. And so you combine that, you have a better looking child. With good looking people, they can afford to mate with someone that's regular looking and combine that and have an even better looking child than they are. But with ugly people, that's not the case. If you're ugly, you're most likely going to be mating with another ugly person or just a regular person. And so you're going to end up with either just a regular looking child or an ugly child. And so it affects procreation and it's a disability that, um, that becomes a handicap when it comes to even giving birth and having children. And I think that's a pretty significant handicap when we start thinking about it and talking about it. But let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with that? Do you not agree with that? If you're, if you have a child that's also good looking, then you are giving them a couple of steps. You're, you're giving them a couple of steps to start out with, right? They don't have to like crawl for every little thing that they have. It's almost like being born into a rich family. The the hell, you know, like if you're born into a rich family, you're good. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about nothing, right? It's almost, it's the same concept, except being born in a rich family is better. I would take that over. I don't think, I don't know. I would take that over like being white, for example, if I were born into a rich family, I prefer to be born into a rich family than being white. Um, but that's the same concept, right? So it even affects that. Well, those are some of the things and some of the thoughts that I had. And I was like, listen, being ugly is a disability. And that's sad, but that's just the way society works. And that's how it's always worked. Even if we look at history, you know, and we kind of take a look at what it was like back in the day. Well, let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts? How are you feeling about this topic? It is such a crazy topic, I know. Uh, but comment below. And if you found this topic at all interesting uh, or informative, go ahead and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more topics like this one and more videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.